Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is the beautiful, foggy, foggy outdoors. And I'm about to head out for some walleye. That's the goal today up at Gull Harbor on Lake Winnipeg, on what I would consider the central part of Lake Winnipeg. Some will consider it the north, but Lake Winnipeg is huge and there's still another huge north base. And I wonder what the fishing's like up there. Maybe we'll have to find out one day. But for now, like I said, we're at Gull Harbor. I love it up here. It's so peaceful, it's relaxing. There's hardly anybody fishing. So I'm gonna fire up the Skidoo Expedition and head on out into the fog. I'm thankful I have a, a GPS on a day like today because it's foggy. I can't even see the lighthouse tower from here. And normally it's like, boom, right there in your face. So we will take our time, head out, and see if we can put some walleyes topside. The only really goal today is to catch a fish to cook, to have some fish tacos right on the ice. That's literally my only goal. I just want to enjoy my day more than anything and just get back to mother nature and have a good time. So let's do it. Oh, and this is why you want a GPS. Look at, you cannot see anything. I can kinda, kinda make out shore there a little, little bit. End of days it feels like right now. Snow is soft, sticky. Yeah, let's pop some holes and see what we can find. Come on, come on. Come on. There we go. Okay, well, it's taken an hour. It's about to move. I finally caught a fish. Oh, it was way up suspended. It's not a bad one at all either. Okay, well, maybe I'll be sitting here after all. Nice. Oh, not bad at all. I don't know how this looks in the fog. And like I said, it's taken an hour, but I just popped like a, uh, I got my measuring board behind me, but I'm thinking 23-ish probably for the first fish of the day. That one was super suspended. Yeah, looks like 20, 23 exactly. Well, at least I'm, at least I'm bang on with guessing 23 inches exactly for the first fish. That one was way up, suspended up high. The first probably half an hour here, hardly saw any fish. Was about to pack up try something else, all of a sudden I started to see some fish around. And then within this next half an hour, this last half an hour, I saw lots of fish cruising, some going so slow. There's a fish on my rattle bait right now too. Some going so slow, some not really moving much at all. And I'm like, you know what? I think it's time to possibly move. And then boom, I got a fish to eat. So now I think I'm gonna wait a little bit longer. Maybe now that these fish are starting to move through, Maybe I'll get a bite. This one's on the rattle bait. Drilling this aside, this extra hole was, was smart. And there's my eater. Nice. There's my eater. We're having fish tacos after all today. Well, that one is staying in or on top of the ice, I should say. I shouldn't hold it over that hole because it's gonna flop out of my hand, go down, and I'm not gonna have a fish for shore lunch. Fish tacos on the ice. Life is good. Come on. Do it. Do it. Do it. That fish is like right below the ice. Five feet below the ice. <laughs> nice. Okay, guess we're not moving after all. Got a bunch of fish cruising through all of a sudden. This is good. Another beautiful one, probably 21, 22. Going back. And I got fish on the rattle bait again here too. Jeez, that one was just hit me like a rocket. 
what a change. I went from catching nothing, seeing nothing, to just having fish come through the screen like crazy. This is exactly what I was hoping for. That's a nice thick one. Oh, nice. That thing just clobbered it too. <laughs> Look at that fat green back right there. Oh, he just drossed that camera. I'm not, I'm going to get him back. So I got to clean that lens off. He hammered that camera with water. Nice fat, like 23 inch or 24 inch. That was epic. Well, life is good. That was a, a quick little flurry of some fish there. That was awesome. I think what I might do is because I probably have a pretty bad sun angle here coming up right away is turn the camera around fish out of these same holes here but even move my shelter over a bit and uh sit in that and be able to kind of fish and hang out uh because i am going to cook lunch fish tacos i'm not leaving here until after i'm done having lunch for sure now just because of what i saw where i had a pot of fish come through and it was bang it was good so we're going to hang out here a little bit longer for sure i love it up here like there's just nobody around. It's crazy. There is areas that have some traffic right beside Gull Harbor. Hecla is probably like the busiest spot that I saw, but you don't have to go very far to get away from people. There are some areas you have to watch out for, for sure. There are some high current areas. So be very, very careful. If you are going to head in that direction at all, make sure you know what you're doing and you drill and you take your time. Cause there were some holes where I drilled yesterday where it was like one hole was two and a half feet ice, three feet ice almost, and the next one was 18 inches. So it can change pretty quick. So be very, very careful. And uh, yeah, just be safe more than anything. But this is awesome up here. Lake Winnipeg greenbacks with no people. I love it. We are set up I like this. This is nice. Rattle bait here on the running gun and then the uh, jig and a minnow on the drench and we are we're firing i'm ready send the fish send more fish come on big fish come on come on Oh, come on, eat it. That's a big fish. There we go. I got him. I'm sure this is a big one or bigger anyway. I don't know. I got, oh, I'm zoomed out really far right now too, or zoomed in really far. I'm sure it's decent fish. It's got a little bit of weight to it. I don't know how big. Oh, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck right there. Okay. Oh, slush, slush, slush. <laughs> it's slushy right now. Okay. It's not huge, but it's definitely the biggest of the day. And I never caught anything this big yesterday either. Nice. Oh, baby. Let's get a quick measure right here. Got my board. Measure, and then we'll, oh, easy, easy. Oh, just fat. Wow. Only 25 inches. 25 inches of <laughs> big, thick green back. That was awesome. I like this. Oh, man. After yesterday grinding out on four different spots, just trying to figure out that thing shot down like a rocket. Wow. Hammered down there. Yeah, after yesterday going four different spots, grinding it out hard, and now scoring a couple nice ones, 25 being the biggest right now, and a couple other 23s. Life is good. And we're having fish tacos right on the ice. I really, really had to work that fish. It took a while for that one to eat, but it did eat the old jig in a minute. The old jig in a minute. That one was tight, tight to bottom. Tight to bottom. I got some fancy little rod holders here now called the R holds. R holds. They just screw in right there into the front of your flip over. And then you can like take your rod out and you can tuck them in for travel and you can obviously put them wherever you want this is where they i put them the best fit kind of for my needs and yeah our holds seem really really solid very good very good quality they're not going to break they're not plastic or anything like that so 
or like an, an aluminum. I'm not sure exactly what they are, but if you search that name, R Holds, I'll put it down here on the bottom and search them up because they're pretty nice. Thanks for sending me these rod holders. They're, uh, they're good. I like them. Oh, oh, come on. Come on. Little guy. This one's smaller, I think. I let him eat, and then I kind of let him level for a second, and then I gave it to him. Smaller. Oh, it's a burbot. Wow, okay. Oh, a burb. Oh, a perfect little bait fish burb. <laughs> burb is the word. You're just a little guy. This one come from the bottom too, but, oh, that one coming from the bottom isn't small either that thing just eventually just crushed it it's funny how it like came up so slow and then finally just like engaged on it like full-on crush that other mark looked pretty nice too wow this is a great day so far nice fish let's we'll get it back down quick because i got more fish down there now they're like probably 24 25 inch or oh that was fun that thing came up so slow to start with and then eventually just like engaged like hardcore on it little guy off the bottom yeah oh come on you can leave me alone i've caught lots of fish now i don't need to catch the little ones anymore especially i've got lunch too this one's too small for lunch even curious if it's a walleye or a sauger a little sauger that'd be a good one for jay right there love you jay There's lots of fish tight to bottom here right now. Come on. Oh yeah, there we go. Wow. Oh boy. What a, what a change of day compared to yesterday. And obviously it could have been could have been the day or it could have been just the spot. <laughs> could have been their mood. Anything like that. Wow. <laughs> that fish was fired right up easy okay yeah another 24 inch -er. <laughs> beautiful 24 inch greenback crushing them crushing them the old quarter ounce kalen's google eye long shank jig i like that glass rattle in there i like the long shank for the dead minnows salties great day great great day so far to think i had almost moved and not to say i couldn't move somewhere else and be slamming fish either but i was here for an hour before i finally caught a fish and it was all because i first finally started to see some fish a half an hour in i was about to leave then and i like started seeing fish i'm like okay now i'm seeing fish i'll wait a little bit and all of a sudden I'm like, no, I'm like, you know what? I'm seeing fish, but I can't get them to eat it all. And then boom, they just turned on. There's always bite windows, right? Like always stress that if you're on fish, don't be in a hurry to necessarily leave. Like wait some of those, wait some of those fish out sometimes. And obviously there's probably different bite windows in different areas of the lake at different times, et cetera. But, and it's hard to like always pinpoint and stay on top of it because it changes so quickly. There could have been a bite window, you know, like five miles that way. And then all of a sudden there's a bite window five miles the other way, you know, like an hour and a half later or whatever. I'm still torn between like what's the best way to fish some of this Lake Winnipeg stuff. I know the South Basin running around seems to be better at times, yet the guys in the ice castles, the ice yetis, like Chris Gone does really good just hanging out sometime. Matt Cornell, I know, has I've heard some rumors that he kind of hangs out sometime and puts some puts some time in a certain area and just hangs out and waits out those fish, right? Like, what's the answer? I don't know. And that's the that's the fun part is we're never really gonna know the the actual answer. It just keeps us guessing all the time, which is so much fun with the whole fishing side of it. Get another fish crawling on the bottom here slow. But I love just always that mysterious thing, right? Or you're always trying to think. Think, think, think. Use your ba brain. It's the same thing like I like I like logic, lo logic games, strategy games, right? Where you have to like think. So that was awkward with that hook set, but it kind of handcuffed me. I like games where you have to think, you know, where strategy is involved. It gets that brain going. That's why I like the whole hunting for these fish too. Oh, so good. What a day. 
<laughs> that barbless trout will be able to just wiggle it out. Don't even need pliers. A beautiful, I don't know, 23 inch greenback, baby. I am having a fun day. I could, oops, sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's my fault. That is so green. It just shimmers. Oh, I could go home right now. I could be perfectly content. Well, not exactly. I haven't had fish tacos yet. After fish tacos, then I could go home. I'd be perfectly content. How awkward was that hook set? Way above my head. <laughs> he handcuffed me. I wasn't planning on fishing for that fish. And then I was going to fish it with the jig as it was coming in. All of a sudden, it just started to come up with the rattle bait. I'm like, no, I guess we're fishing it with the rattle bait. Rattle bait stopped him. It did too. Ah, oh, he ate it actually. I couldn't get to. I did it again. I did it again. Handcuff myself. He wouldn't eat it on the jig in the minnow. And I got the rattle bait up to him, and he turned and he crushed it like instantly. <laughs> what a day! This is fun. This is fun. The average size of greenbacks today have been great. It's like another 22 incher probably. So good. Okay, okay. I don't want to make a mess. Oh, yeah, handcuffed me again just because I was going with the jig in the minnow. I was like, no, he's going right by it. And I got to the rattle bait right above him. He just turned on it instantly. He ate it pretty quick, too. With all these fish, I've definitely worked up an appetite, not going to lie. I'm going to get the cooker going here right away and uh, get prepping. This is going to be a super easy meal, like so simple. And I got to do it right here. Mm. I didn't bring a plate for the fish tacos, but that's okay. I don't need much for that. Oh boy, this one's smaller. When I say smaller, it's like probably an eater size fish. Yeah, I'd say this is an eater, maybe a bit smaller than an eater. Could be, could be even a sauger actually. Feels feels really small. It'd be, it'd be a little bit too small for an eater, but it's a greenback. It's a walleye. I'm trying something a little bit different for me today. I've guided for 20 years and I've never had a shore lunch or fish cooked with lard before. They say that this is the best, lard's the best. I will say that the beef tallow I've used recently and I do have some more of it. I just had a big tub of it and it was harder for me to bring on this trip. I didn't prepare in time. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna stop the grocery store real quick, pick up some lard. I didn't want to pick up canola oil because I didn't want my jug to bounce around in the uh, sleigh and get broken up. So I was like, you know what? Let's try lard. They say this is like one of the best ways or the best way for good tasting fish. So we're gonna try our fish cooked in lard today. I've got my walleye fillets right there. My, my one walleye. I'm taking some Frank's Red Hot here as a binder. And I'm gonna put just a little bit in there. I don't need much, just a little bit to kind of coat that fish. That's gonna be a binder for my catching cook. That's all it is, mix it up. And then I'm gonna go with today the original crunchy catch and cook. We're gonna have crunchy fish tacos, baby. Oh, and I should mention, I don't have any yet. I have some coming on the way, but catch and cook now offers a gluten-free uh, coating as well. So if you uh, couldn't, or couldn't have catch and cook in the past because of the gluten, they now have a gluten-free recipe, and I believe it's actually the same as the original Catch and Cook. I'm pretty sure the same same flavor of the recipe, but gluten-free. We don't need much because we just got one wall in there. Like that. Mix it up. I really should have got my lard going first, but that won't take long to heat up at all. Oh. Mmm, smells so good. The wind is completely gone right now, so it's gonna make cooking this so easy. Look at this, fishing and cooking at the same time. Oh, life's good. In the end, all we have is the memories we create, and that's all that matters. And days like this where I gotta have fish tacos on the ice with nobody in sight. Are you kidding me? I'm on Lake Winnipeg with nobody in sight. This is so amazing. I have done fish tacos like this 
before on the channel. I just don't know if I've ever done it when I'm actually fishing like this, but tortilla shells right there. I've got a mild salsa, kind of more of a bruschetta, I'd say, than anything but a mild salsa. Some Tex-Mex cheese. And then my favorite ingredient for it, the sweet and hot, sweet and heat. It's also called, I think, as well. This one's from Co-op, but this is sweet and hot uh, mustard. Sweet and hot mustard. That's my probably my, my secret ingredient for my fish tacos. You can get, obviously, it's crazy with the fish tacos. You can do coleslaw, make different chipotle sauces, whatever. This is just a very, very basic and easy fish taco recipe. Looks like I got enough lard. I used a not, quite, not quite a quarter, a little less than a quarter of it. But it looks like we got enough in there. I'd say the beef tallow has been my favorite so far to cook fish with hands down it's got a higher temperature for like it doesn't burn and it just adds that really good flavor to the fish and chris gone cooked some fries with it as well for me when i stayed in the yeti and oh it was so good it has turned into an absolutely stunning day out here it went from foggy and a little bit windy to just like gorgeous okay in goes the fish The smaller pieces are finished up there, so we're gonna just have a taste test with the, the lard. Mm. It tastes pretty good. It's got a way different taste than with the canola oil for sure. I still, the beef towel is still, I like it better than this, but definitely has a different taste than the canola oil. Like, it's crazy the actual difference. Hmm, it's good. Beef towel is still my favorite. But that was that was pretty good. Well, the tacos are ready and they look really good. I just have to fold them up. But right there, as I got, I don't know what the lighting's like. I'm better over here. There we go. Fish tacos. Oh, this is a really good lunch. I'm not gonna lie. I don't have to do a taste test on the video because I already know what they taste like. I've had these lots before. Very, very basic, easy recipe. And what a better way to, or is there a better way to enjoy it on the ice like this? Slamming a bunch of nice walleyes. Nothing giant yet, but those could come at, at any time. You never know. But we're gonna enjoy some fish tacos and hopefully put some more fish topside. It has slowed down here a little bit in terms of seeing fish, but I could easily have another wave come through. I'm not uh, in a hurry to move anytime soon. Let's have lunch. Well, I've had lunch, I've caught fish. Where's the caught? Might be time for a nap. It's funny how fast this day changed from foggy to sunny. We've got some overcast now, but it looks like it's just partly overcast. Just gonna sit here, enjoy my day hopefully catch some more fish if not i'm content already i'm good oh a fish just shot straight up little guy though little guy well breaks up the lull for sure <laughs> oh that's funny he came off at the hole and then he swam up does that count as a catch <laughs> you gotta go there you go he came out came off right at the bottom of the hole then he swam up on top of the ice He's like hey how's it going that's hilarious oh here we go here we go which one's better top or bottom i think the bottom one come on turn up turn up Turn up. There we go. A little bit of a lull between fish. The other fish is going to the rattle bait. Maybe. No, it came back. Like I said, a little bit of a lull, but we got one. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Yes. That's a fat one. <laughs> Man, are they chunky. Wow. Easy. So much spunk, too. Hammered back that jig in the minna. Pounded it. I'm curious. I'm thinking again another 24, maybe 25. That's a nice fish. 
fat 24 inches yeah a nice suspended 24 inch blimp <laughs> oh that thing's so fat oh that's a oof. again these things want to flop out of my hands so bad i have to clean that camera again it's crazy wow like a rocket holy cow that fish shot back down so fast that was insane the only thing that would turn this day from a great day to an unreal day is a 28 plus inch walleye but i'm not going to be pick here complain at all i'd honestly take days like this with nice weather where a person can just fish outside enjoy themselves more than anything this is just so nice oh i think i got this one to stop on the bottom here maybe engage with the jig and the minna maybe yeah it's coming up it's coming up oh it ate it it ate it <laughs> it ate it and i totally like it slack lined me right like come straight up eight leveled set jeez these fish are so chunky this one's not as long these fish are so chunky i have no idea how they're going to show up on the camera at all just because i'm fishing outside i can't really see the screen that well because of the sun the sun glare but i do have the sun kind of over here so it's not like it's going to be that bad of an angle and usually it turns out better than i think it's going to but i wonder if they're going to glow that green like they are when i can see them in my hand right now on the actual camera too if they'll they'll glow green they're so cool the fish looks decent come on come on come on that was awesome that was awesome man it's like they stalk the bait they stalk it and they stalk it and if you slowly pull it away from them this one's got big head shakes oh just another nice quality fish oh wow can't believe i've caught this many like mid 20 inch fish it's mind-blowing it's so good another 24 incher 24 incher has been the theme today crazy steady biggest is 25 but i think i've got about five or six 24s already for sure wow this has been so much fun ah oh, it's been a while since i've had a good walleye kicking where i've laid into him a little bit and this is a pile of fun and that's all i've been using he's got that minnow kind of destroyed a little bit but i've been using a glow white glow uh quarter ounce kalins i see this one's starting to get a little bit bent out because i've caught piles of piles of fish on it already i'm going to actually retie because i just talked about that i'm going to cut it off retie and i'm going to try try a chartreuse one i think i have one in my box for a little bit come on give one more kick i'll start to come up with it yeah there we go there we go i don't want it to handcuff me here so i'm just kind of reeling down so i'm jiggling on the spot yeah okay there we go wow that was awesome that was so cool stay glued buddy this is on the chartreuse jig this retied not too long ago chartreuse if it ain't chartreuse it ain't no use what a fatty they definitely look bigger on the screen when they're far out and then as it got closer it shrunk down a little bit but it's another <laughs> I, they're hard to grab sometimes another nice easy she's freaking out on me here pretty heavily another nice 20 i'd say 23 <laughs> oh great great day chartreuse baby it ain't chartreuse it ain't no use well so far so good i don't know if it's like the day just changed and the fish started to eat although you know what yesterday when i fished those four spots i didn't see a lot of fish cruising around period i've seen more fish cruise around today than all those other spots combined that i fished yesterday so it obviously has a lot with finding a pot of fish and i think that's probably the biggest thing is like up here is you just got to put some time in and find some fish and i know when i've talked to some people they say they move quite frequently and one spot will be good one day and it won't be good the next 
I talked about my last video about creating like yourself a little milk run, right? So I can put a, I can put a waypoint on this spot knowing that I could potentially come here in the future and catch fish again. This is one of the days where I've had no reason to leave though. Now, is there a pot of bigger fish somewhere? Very possible, but that's all with experience of trying to figure out areas, right? And that's why a lot of times, sometimes going with a guide, especially if you're only gonna have two, three days in that area and that's it, nothing wrong with do it yourself, right? I like the adventure of going out. I get more enjoyment myself out of going out and figuring something out and catching 24, 25 inch walleyes than going out with a guide and catching a 30 inch walleye. Don't get me wrong. I have a lot of friends that are guides and I like love going with them and promoting their business too and fishing with them a little bit. But I love the adventure more than anything. But I have nothing wrong with that that part where it's people like, like I got two, three days. I just want to go with a guide. So I'm going to be on fish, maybe possibly big fish. Big fish are obviously never guaranteed. Even being on fish is never guaranteed either. But those guys work as hard as they can. Where I'm going at is like, it's, it is what you make out of your adventure more than anything. Get over here. Get over here. Oh yeah, come on. Come on, Mr. Walleye. Rise, rise, rise. There it goes, there it goes. It ate it. It didn't eat it. It tapped it. It's gonna come back. There we go. Boom, boom. Eat, hook set, boom. Got him, got him. These barbless jigs, you gotta keep good pressure on them, but don't bang their head off the bottom. <laughs> Look at this, <laughs> these things. That's a 10 inch hole. Oh man, I wanna catch a 30 incher up here so bad. It would just fill that whole hole, it'd be, be so awesome. Chartreuse, another cookie cutter, 23, 24 ish. Oh, oh, oh. wow. Oh, they have so much energy, so much energy unbelievable just whoosh these things shoot back down like a rocket it's insane how fast they shoot back down well i'm back at the marina at gull harbor what a great great day the bike kind of died off just had the fish just stop coming through obviously the the sun is just set now so it seemed to be more of a, a midday bite which is uh, my kind of fishing i like that you know get up a little bit later get out there get set up catch some walleyes, cook lunch, come back. I'm gonna go order some food now here from the restaurant to take back to my cabin. Uh, so I'll, I'll do a little shots of some of the cabins here and whatnot, but look at, they have rental sleds just like mine, 900 expeditions. And then they have snow bears right there too. They do guided trips in the snow bears. Obviously they have fuel here store so groceries if you forget some stuff like that minnows they got some of the best bait i've seen here really 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 good bait and then of course the store here which not the store the restaurant which i'm going to go in and order some food and then i'm going to go back to the room and get my wallet come back pick it up and yeah enjoy my evening dump all the footage and yeah just live life so let's go inside order some food if it's not too busy, I'll do a quick shot. Generally, when there's a bunch of people in there, it's kind of, uh, it not maybe embarrassing isn't the word, but just awkward to pull the camera out and film stuff. So, And I don't want to film people too while they're eating, right? But it's a beautiful, beautiful store. If I can find some, uh, or sorry, restaurant, not store. If I can find some footage from the past, I'll overlay it now. But it's gorgeous inside. Pool table, fireplace, all the fun stuff. But let's go order some food anyways. Look at, they have an Angler's Edge map right here of the restaurant. I was somewhere on this map today. That's all I'll say, I was somewhere on this map, <laughs> away from everybody. I know that, let's see here, this is a pretty popular area right out in here. And uh, I fished here before and done really well. And yeah, but I was, I was somewhere on this map. Well, I went, ordered food, took a peek inside, Came back, started to unload a little bit here and uh, get organized. We're gonna go back to the restaurant and pick up my food. This right here is the duplexes, I believe they're called. So they have that as an option. And I'll go through the other options that they have here too. This one is, looks like it's a fourplex there. 
I, so all of the details are in terms of like what, what it sleeps and stuff like that will all be on the website. And then they have, well, I'll walk over there first. So this is actually a cabin and in the cabin you can cook. There is a kitchen in there. All of these rooms here, that uh, the one that I'm staying in, these other ones, they're more of like a motel room. They do have uh, a small fridge, a microwave and that stuff, but you can't cook in them in terms of like evening food or anything. You can just take some quick breakfast stuff with you, but the restaurant's open every night till eight o'clock. And then those, those that room back there, not this one, but that one, those are uh, little motel rooms. And that's where Adam and I stayed in the fall time, which was awesome. I love it up here. Gull Harbor Resort, north end of Lake Winnipeg. And yeah, who knows what's next. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget, get outside.